Hello Derma fans, today we're looking at our first game, Minesweeper. If you haven't downloaded it yet, you can get it from the Google Play Store. The link is in the description. Not only is it free, but it's ad-free too. This video is mainly for those who have never played Minesweeper, but even if you're an experienced player, you may find some tips and tricks you haven't used before. So stick around, you may learn something. Minesweeper is a single player puzzle game. The objective is to clear a minefield by uncovering all the squares that don't contain a hidden mine, without uncovering any squares that do contain a hidden mine. Let's start by looking at what we can see. We have a minefield consisting of 100 blue squares, 10 wide by 10 deep. Blue squares are covered squares. We don't know what they contain. Above, on the left, we have a flag counter. There are as many flags as there are mines. That means the flag counter also shows us how many mines are contained in the minefield. There are 16 mines in this minefield. We will be placing flags on the squares that we think contain a hidden mine. In the center, we have a smiley face, indicating the game state. We're still alive, so she's smiling. Finally, we have a timer, which tells us how long we've taken so far to solve this minefield. So how do we know which squares contain a hidden mine? Well, at first we don't. We have to guess. We can either click on a random square or, as some people prefer, start with a corner square. Let's start with a corner square, the top right hand one. To uncover a square, we click or touch the square. The uncovered square shows a green 2. This tells us that the two of the surrounding three squares contain a mine. This is not good odds, so it's best to try again somewhere else. Let's try the opposite corner, the bottom left-hand corner. Well, we were very unlucky. That square contained a hidden mine. This happens sometimes, so don't worry. The game has shown us where all the hidden mines are, so we can restart the game knowing that the two other corners are safe. Let's restart the game and try again. Let's begin with the top left-hand corner this time. As you can see, even though we saw where all the mines are, it's not easy to remember where they are. So even restarting the game ensures that the challenge remains. Now, let's use logic to solve this minefield. Let's start with the top green two. The green two indicates that two of its neighbors contain hidden mines. However, only two of the neighbors remain covered. So they must both contain the mines. Let's flag those squares. To flag a square, long kick or touch and hold until you see a flag fly in. Now look at the second green two. Two of its neighbors contain hidden mines too, but we know which two those are, the two that we've flagged already. So we know that the third covered square is safe and we can clear it. Using the same logic, we know that the blue ones only contain a single neighbor with a hidden mine, and the two blue ones to the right already have one of their neighbors flagged, the flag above. So we know that all of the surrounding squares are safe. We can get the game to quickly clear these for us by clicking on these two blue ones. The easiest way to find mines is to look for blue ones on corners. The second blue one is now on a corner. Only one of its neighbors remains covered, so it must contain a mine. Let's flag it. Again, we know that the blue one to the right of this flag refers to this newly flagged square, so we can clear all of its neighbors too. Let's clear them. Of course, we could have just clicked on the blue one and the game would have cleared them for us, but sometimes it's nice to clear the squares yourself. We've exposed another blue one on a corner. Let's flag it and clear its neighbor. How did we know its neighbor was safe? That's right, the blue one above refers to the newly flagged square. Okay, we've cleared all the easy squares and flagged all the obvious mines. Now we really need to get our thinking caps on. Let's look at the three green twos along the bottom. We know that they have two neighbors that contain hidden mines. In each case, we know one of them. For the left two, 
it's the one above. For the right one, it's the one to the right. Let's focus on the two on the left. The left hand one only has two covered unflagged neighbors. So its second hidden mine must be one of these. However, the right hand one also has these two as neighbors. So its second mine must also be one of these. Therefore, its third neighbor must be safe. Let's cover, uncover it. This hasn't helped us much. So let's look at the four numbered squares to the right. We have a red three, a green two, another red three, and another green two. Let's focus on the middle green two and red three. They both have one neighbor flagged. So for the green two, we know that one of its three right-hand neighbors contains a hidden mine. And for the red three, we know that two of its three neighbors contain hidden mines. However, they share two of the neighbors. The green two indicates that at most one of these two shared neighbors contains a mine. But the red three requires two of its three neighbors to contain a mine. So not only must one of these two shared neighbors contain a mine, but its third neighbor must also contain a mine. Similarly, if the red three tells us that at least one of the two shared neighbors contains a mine, the green two with its previously flagged neighbor to the left tells us that its third neighbor must be safe. Let's clear the safe square and flag the unsafe square. Now, below, we have a green two with two flagged neighbors. Let's click on it and let the game clear its remaining uncovered uncover unflagged neighbors. We now have another blue one with one flagged neighbor. Let's click it and clear all its remaining covered unflagged neighbors. Yes, we've broken through to the other side. It's looking good. Once again, we look for blue ones on corners and flag the remaining square. The covered square to the left is safe because the blue one below refers to this newly flagged square. So we can clear it. Now, the green two with one flagged neighbor tells us that one of its neighbors to the left contains a hidden mine. However, the blue one below it implies that it must be one of the lower two. So the third covered square must be safe. We can clear it. Hmm, we seem to be stuck again. Let's look at the red three in the middle. It only has three covered neighbors. Two of them are flagged already, so let's flag the remaining one. We now know all the hidden mines associated with the green two to its left. They're flagged so we can clear its remaining covered square. Now we can go back to the three twos we looked at at the beginning. The right hand green two now only has one option for its second hidden mine, so we can flag it. This of course is also the second hidden mine for the other green twos, so we can clear the remaining covered square to the left. Ah, a blue one with a flag neighbor. Let's click it to clear the remaining covered squares. More blue ones. Let's click one of them to clear the remaining covered squares too. This has revealed the final hidden mine for the red three to the right, the one on the corner. So we can flag it too. We can now clear the covered square, colored square below it because the blue one refers to this newly flagged square. Another blue one, we click it to clear its remaining covered neighbors. The red threes tell us that the remaining two covered squares both contain hidden mines. Let's flag them. Now we can go back to the top, right hand side. Let's start with the ones. The right hand one reveals that only one of the right hand two covered squares contains a mine. Since these are shared by the second blue one, the third covered square is safe, even though it's opposite a green two. We can clear it. The green two now only has two remaining covered neighbors, so they must contain hidden mines. 
Let's flag them. These are the same two mines, the green two above. So we can click on it to clear the remaining covered safe squares. The two reds to the left both have the same three covered neighbors, but only two are flagged. Let's flag the remaining one. We can also clear the remaining blue one covered square to the right. It reveals a green two with only two covered neighbors. One is already flagged, so let's flag the other one. Looking at our flag count, we now only have one more hidden mine to find. Without clearing the remaining squares, can you work out which one it is? Pause the video now to think about it. Did you work it out? Or did you remember that the first time we tried to play this minefield, we uncovered a green two in the top right hand corner? Personally, I didn't remember. I find it easier to work it out. Let's clear the minefield. Thank you for watching. I hope you find that it has been helpful. Have fun and enjoy our ad free version of Minesweeper. Remember, in this version, you can customize the size of the minefield and the number of mines it contains. Go to settings, click custom, and create the minefield of your dreams. See you next time.